My name is Suri Manfredi and I am a fighter. I always liked to fight, like, since always, yeah. But it was more like a, a way of defending myself and I, I didn't have like an easy lifestyle when I was younger. I was living as well in the streets and sometimes, so I had to defend myself. But uh, I can't say like I, I sense that I, I like it in a way. Not defending myself, but you know, the, the fighting uh, part. When I was a child, I did judo, and uh, for all my uh, teenagehood, I, I always wanted to do boxing or K1 or something. My life bring me to, to Romania. I was traveling at that time, and uh, I had to spend like the winter time in Romania, and I didn't know what to do. And I thought, okay, I want to understand the culture and the people in Romania during my time. What, what can I do? And then I realized, damn, you always wanted to do some boxing, some some K1 or whatever, so it is the time. So that's how it started. So I went first to MMA class. I liked it, so I started to do BGG as well. When I first started MMA in Romania, they really treat me as a woman. And I, at that time, I wasn't athletic at all. I was like doing way too much party, so I had no stamina, no, no nothing, you know. <laughs> and uh, because the way they treat me uh, from the beginning, it kind of gave me some uh, anger to push myself. And uh, in somehow, it was good that they treat me like, just, uh, it's the woman, you know. They left you apart in some hall during the training. But this frustration, because I knew I could do way better, I was kind of uh, challenging myself. Maybe if they would have, uh, I don't know, treat me like other, like, uh, that would have, that would have put me in a, into a challenging mode to myself. And then, uh, you know, always when I felt like a, a bit left, uh, left alone in training in different gym, I was always thinking like, yeah, no, you know what? Uh, I, I prove myself that uh, I'm gonna be on the best uh, of the of the guy in, in this gym and even better. You know, it, it pushed me. And then when I went back to France. I wanted to continue MMA, but then I discovered Muay Thai. So I started to fight in those three um, sports. I think at that time, the MMA in France was not legal. So it was like sort of MMA. And uh, I don't know, I didn't really enjoy the atmosphere of, uh, of, the, of the crowd and as well of the people in the gym in, uh, during the MMA class. It has a moment when uh, when I had to choose. So at that time I chose uh, Muay Thai. And I really enjoyed the, the Muay Thai atmosphere, the, the culture around. It was more fitting to me and BGD was nice. I, I was more talented at that time. But the, the truth is uh, on the mat, and on the ring, it's a completely different world, and I really enjoy the, the world of the ring. I like the fact that when you enter in the ring, there is no easy way out. So I like the fact that, okay, this is the moment, and then suddenly it's all about that moment. It's all about uh, the focus. It's the moment to prove to yourself so many things, to show to the world so many things. And, uh, this is the only place in the world when you feel that, when you can have this. So that's why I love it so much. The first Muay Thai fight was in France. It was uh, in the south of France. Uh, I think it really stressed me out so much that uh, I was completely disconnected of myself, if I can say so. So the fight was, you know, I think like boring like amateur fight can be sometimes it's like some action and way too much way of waiting i wasn't concentrated i wasn't myself and i hated that i was so disappointed of myself the end result of that fight it was a draw it was like a, a slap like hey come on you can do better than this and somehow uh, the mark of this slap uh, stay forever so i kind of promised myself like no no you will be always connected to yourself so I was like, okay, I need to find like a, a good trainer that can teach me like a very solid techniques and basic and as well a place where I can fight as much as I want. 
So after some research, I went to Thailand the first time in a, in a very traditional Muay Thai camp with a Thai trainer, but it was okay. I did like uh, in three months, five fights, but I, I wasn't convinced about the trainer in itself and the training at itself too. Then I went back to France and then I met people who told me, yeah, go to see Charlton. This is the man for you, for what you are looking for. Then I went to, to his gym. At that time, it was in Korat, in Nakhon Hachasima. And after, I think, one month, I made a phone call to my uh, flatmate and I say, OK, you can throw up all my stuff. I will never come back. Then uh, here I am. <laughs> his techniques and his knowledge, but the way he always pushed me. He never, he never considered me as a, just like a woman, but he considered me as an athlete with ability. So he was always pushing me harder and harder and harder. And uh, since uh, I'm training with him, we made all my fights together. The hardest because uh, I fucked up my, uh, my, um, my uh, cut and uh, I went two down, like I really felt without energy against that strong opponent was with Pedija. You can see blood trickling down into the eye. That's huge. Like uh, she is tough, there is uh, no question about it. But uh, at that time, it was the first time that I went down to 51 and I, instead of losing the weight uh, on the last minute, I lost the weight uh, like on two weeks before. So I was exhausted for the fight and uh, way too weak for this kind of strong opponent. But yeah, I would say Pedija is a, is a very tough uh, and strong uh, woman. But I think we all agree about that. I'm not saying that I would have won, uh, but I'm just saying like I was fucking weak that day, which is different. Some girls, you know, they are fucking strong on punches and when you get punches, you're like, yeah, I don't want to get that anymore. Some other have like crazy kicks. I, I think I remember more people from some action that they did. Like, uh, I remember one girl in Letway, I don't remember her name. She came from Vietnam. She was very light, but oh, so powerful in the, in the hand. Like uh, I, I thought during the fight, uh, she cannot touch me. I think she's the one that I felt the most in my career. No gloves, also it's a different uh, game. But uh, as well, sometimes I thought that girls would be weaker than I thought, and no, no, them like way stronger than uh, than she, what she seems to be. The first uh, Litwe fight I had, the first round uh, was a bit of adaptation, but then it, it went like uh, super fluid. I really loved it. I loved every part, and I was super uh, in the moment. So that fight. Uh, I don't know, it's one of my best uh, memory. I'm not saying uh, it's easy, but uh, I really love training. So it's, it's not like I have to force myself to wake up in the morning or to, to come to the gym. No, I love it. So it's, it's not the hardest part. Fighting, I, I love it too. It's never been about places where I fought or opponent, even if I'm very glad that I fought with some opponent. It's more about, um, I don't know, uh, when I'm thinking about it, like uh, some state where I was capable to fight and it was crazy uh, in itself. Once I fought like in 30 days, five times, which is insane. So you know how hard it is because you still continue to train, then you fight, you're fucking tired, you still have injury from other fight, but then you keep going. And uh, on the moment you don't realize uh, but then it's after, you're like, wow. So it is more like some moment like this that I'm very proud, like, yeah, I did that. Uh, or, you know, some when I'm thinking, yeah, I, I did fight in Muay Thai, Bare Knuckle, Lateway, Kertrak, K1, like being able to, to switch as much as I, I could uh, in different sports and to not always having the result that I wanted, but at least making a a nice fight, like an advertising fight that everybody liked, almost. <laughs> so that is uh, the moment that I'm more, more proud. It is not about the places or the belt or whatever, because as we know, like a belt, you can have uh, many belts, but uh, not fighting uh, against very tough opponents. So belt can mean nothing. It is more about, uh, for me, uh, what I put on the moment 
uh, than anything else. The best uh, weight for me for fighting is 52, but sometimes it's not that easy to to find an opponent that says yes at at the at the weight division. Sometimes we got like offer, it was like, no, this is 57 or 60 or nothing, and uh, because I'm I'm craving, I'm starving for fighting, we always say yeah, fuck off, yes. I'm not gonna be on the same weight, but fuck off, we say yes. Charlton once he asked me, but don't you want to go as well? Uh, in, in MMA as you do before, like uh, you already have like a solid uh, um, uh, BGD base, uh, you would just need to work uh, again on it and then to adapt your style, you can adapt and it could be nice to have like, uh, I don't know, some fight in UFC or you know in the biggest uh, uh, MMA organization uh, as well in your, in your career. So. Uh, we started to think about it and I went back to BGG training, grappling uh, and I don't know, yeah, we, yeah, we just decided uh, like, uh, like that. It was a good idea because uh, it is a new challenge. So it's fresh air, fresh meat, fresh people, fresh uh, dream, uh, everything is fresher, so it's nice. So I fought in France like a month ago in MMA and then uh, Manon Fioro, she's like a number one uh, con uh, number one in UFC now and uh, her coach asked me if I can stay for her UFC uh, preparation so I say yeah of course uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's do that so for two months I was training with her with new people and uh, yeah I completely see why it is uh, it is so important sometimes to just uh, get some new hair, new training partner, new way of training and new challenge. My motivation in some hope went uh, from that to that. And uh, so I feel uh, like, wow, super excited. Yeah, I was like, yeah, really, you invited me to stay. Wow, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so uh, lately I really had like a moment in my mind I was doubting doubting a lot which never happened to me in my life about anything like I'm the kind of person if I decide something then I just go 200% for it and I never questioned myself before doing things and lately I was in this moment like doubting about my result because I'm not used to to have many loss in a row so and this is what happened so I was doubting a lot and this I don't know, it was maybe the biggest challenge to kind of avoid those doubt, those fear, and just to say, no, you keep going and you, you keep working as hard as you can, even harder, and, and just uh, to get back to the point, like you just do the things 200% and without thinking about the result or without thinking, is it a good idea or not? But uh, because it was the first time in my life that it happened, those fear and those doubt, I was kind of lost in, in myself, if I can say so. But now I feel like uh, no, I'm not lost in myself anymore and I am uh, uh, again like uh, rising up. So yeah, I passed that uh, challenge. Boxing world is a hard, it's a fucking hard world. It's hard. And I don't think like uh, now it's nice to treat the people always like in a nice way. It is good that uh, in the gym you still, you still uh, feel uh, the, the tension, that uh, you are not always welcome, that you have to prove everything to be welcome. Back in the day, I would never say it, so. I don't know, this animosity, this, uh, this unnice uh, atmosphere, it is good because it always, as well push you in a certain pressure mood and you have to improve at every training because of this tension. So I think it's good that we keep that uh, tension. It was kind of like a mirror, you know, when, uh, when, uh, when, you, when you have the feeling you did your best and in front of you, like the, the look of the people is like, no, it's still shit. <laughs> then it's, it's a mirror. If, if people are still lying to you, oh no, that's very good, you're so strong. This is bullshit and you maybe start to believe this bullshit, but if they look at you like, no, that's not good that's not good at all, then it's a mirror effect. Then, uh, then you want to prove uh, better and better and better. So it's, it's good. But it's as well like, I mean, if you feel like with time you're still treated like a shit or not like uh, the way you deserve it as a, as a person, then you need to change your gym. I mean, of course, I'm not uh, saying like uh, you need to accept everything and uh, no, no, no. I mean, 
some trainers are, are completely wrong uh, and they are not good, so this is it, so better change gym in this case. I've been raised like this by my parents. We are still in connection and they are a very nice person, but uh, they raised me like uh, you have to count on yourself. You can maybe relay sometimes on family, but it's all about yourself. And the second is because I really had to survive by myself at a very young age. And uh, I, I had very hard moments and I was completely alone to face life and, uh, in a very young age. So I don't know, it's kind of built me the way I am now. Like uh, you can sometimes uh, rely on people, but uh, it's not 100% trustable. And at the end of the day, you're gonna die alone. So you better... <laughs> you better deal with yourself. Uh, it was also a bit of challenge sometimes to accept that I'm not 100% alone in my career, that <laughs> I can as well uh, count on, uh, on Charlton. And at the beginning it was weird like for me to think about him as a, as a, as a shoulder or whatever. It's as well, it's as well a be beautiful story for that because uh, he's someone that I can count on him forever. This kind of relationship needs time to be built and I know that uh, I would never be able to build that with somebody else. He knows me perfectly as a person as well, as an athlete and as a person, which means he knows when I'm tired, when it, there is no point to pushing me and he knows when I'm not tired, so he knows how to push me, how to light the fire on me and uh, this is fucking priceless to me because the way he trained me is perfectly perfect for me and the connection we have together is perfect as well yeah, yeah I'm lucky for that <laughs> don't you think uh, boxing is just a reflect uh, of yourself but I don't think it's only about boxing it's when you decide to to be 100% dedicated to something. I'm, I'm saying not as a hobby, but really as a passion. If you have some uh, stop in your personal life, then you will find it in your passion, in your boxing. And when you found the click, the understanding in your life, suddenly some, um, some stuff appear to be more easier in your boxing. And, uh, and it is the way around. So I believe when, uh, when, you, when you put yourself 100% to something, it's just, uh, it just a mirror effect on your personal life and your passion. Whatever you decide, uh, just avoid uh, the people that think they need to give you uh, them advice. This is bullshit. Many people uh, just try, in most of the case, to cut you in your dream. So don't listen to anything, just follow your, your own instinct. No one is in your own body, in your, on your life, so just avoid uh, listening to others, just follow yourself.